A dissolve effect like the one on screen looks great during a teleportation animation or when an object is destroyed. The glowing edge helps to emphasise the effect and makes it look a lot more futuristic. Today, we're going to use ShaderGraph to dissolve objects above a certain Y coordinate in world space. The source code for this is available on GitHub, and a write-up of this tutorial is available on my website. Links are in the description. We'll create a new PBR graph as a basis by going to Create, Shader, PBR Graph, then name it something like Dissolve. The first thing we'll do is add a base colour and plug it into the albedo field. Add a new colour property, call it albedo, and drag it onto the graph then immediately connect it to the albedo field. In practice, you'll probably want to use the texture 2D, but we'll use a colour for demonstration. To generate some variation on the edge of the dissolve, we'll use one of the built-in noise nodes which Unity includes under Create Node Procedural Noise. Each one works a bit differently, so try swapping between each type of noise until you find the one you like. I've chosen Simple Noise, this takes in a scale parameter, which controls the resolution of the noise clouds. Let's create another property, this time of type vector 1, called noise scale, with a default value of around 50, then plug that into the scale field. We also want to control how strongly the noise distorts the edge of the dissolve effect. For this, add another vector 1 property called noise strength and give it a default value of 1. We want to remap the values from the simple noise node so that the values go from between 0 and 1 to between minus noise strength and plus noise strength. Unity has a built in remap node which takes in one range of values and outputs another, so go ahead and use that. We need to create a vector 2. For the x component, we'll negate noise strength. For the y, we'll leave noise strength alone. Pass this vector 2 into the out min max field. This gives us a measure of variation to the edge of the dissolve. To determine where the edge is, create a new vector 1 property called cutoff height. This will control the y position of the cutoff in world space. Add this to the noise calculations we've made so far. Now we need to remove pixels which exceed the cutoff point. We can get the world position of a pixel by using a position node and setting the space to world. Since we're using the y axis for the cutoff, we'll need a split node to take the g component. RGB corresponds to the, the respective XYZ here. To perform the cutoff, we'll use a step node. This acts a bit like an if statement, with an output of 0 or 1. If the edge parameter, which in our case is the noisy Y position of the, of the pixel, is greater than the in parameter, in our case this is the threshold Y value, the output is 0, otherwise it's 1. We can output this directly to the alpha channel of the PBR master node. Make sure you use the cog drop-down menu to make sure this material uses two-sided rendering, so we can see the opposite side of the dissolved mesh. Finally, we'll add a glowing edge to the dissolving parts of this mesh. We also need an edge width property of type vector 1 to define the thickness of these bright edges. Give it a default value of about 0.05. For these edges, we'll use another step node but we'll swap the order of the in and edge parameters so that the noisy pixel y coordinate goes directly into the edge field. We'll add edge width to the y threshold value, then connect that to the end parameter. This gives us a slightly offset and inverted version of the step function we did before. We'll add another property called edge color. This is the course of type color. And we'll set the mode to HDR so that we can bump up the intensity far above the standard maximum. In the color picker, Increase the intensity field to make the highlights brighter. Multiply this together with the edge color and then plug it into the emission channel of the PBR master node. And with that, we can now add a material using this shader to make objects dissolve. With a little bit of scripting, we can animate the Y coordinate cutoff threshold, as you can see here. You'll need to include a bloom effect on your camera to make the miss of color on the edges glow, which the default URP scene already has set up. Thanks for watching. As always, this video is made possible by my Patreon supporters. Your pledges are greatly appreciated. Until next time.